Right, uh, so uh, first of all, I'm uh, really excited to be here in Boston and uh, what an amazing event um, uh, Inbound's going to be this year. Um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit today um, about uh, the B2B benchmark report that we produced for 2023. Um, we analysed uh, over 3 million opportunities um, representing uh, $37 billion worth of pipeline. Uh, and really what we're looking at is trying to understand the signals that drive revenue. So um, before we get started, a little bit about, about us. Um, uh, my name is Guy Rubin. Uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you, if you can find me. Um, should be easy. Um, I, I've been doing this now for just over a decade, uh, really passionate about helping uh, sales teams to operate and build really consistent revenue engines. So we have over 450 companies using our platform, um, and we, uh, we analyze uh, tens of millions of signals every day for our customers. Um, so hopefully I'm going to deliver some value today and give you guys some uh, cool insights about what we found when we analyzed uh, a lot of data. So uh, let, let's start by understanding the, the, um, the benchmark report that we produced. So we analyzed 3.2 million opportunities that represented $37 billion worth of pipeline to understand the signals that drive revenue. Uh, and they're across all sorts of industries and markets, uh, all B2B. Um, and I suppose the, the biggest shock when we start to look at the headline numbers um, was that uh, 70, over 70% 70 of, of reps miss quota in 2022, okay? So less than 30% of AEs are actually hitting their, uh, hit their number in 2022, and that's, that's a shocking number uh, to consider. We, we saw 2022 was a real challenging year with uh, win rates dropping by 15%, sales cycles increasing by a third, uh, and, deal, uh, and, sale, and deal values actually dropping by a third. So a real shocking year in 2022 compared to 2021. I'm sure we can all remember and experience that. Now, the, the, the biggest challenge here is, that the, is the inefficiency. So when we looked at the way people are operating, people have got these huge tech stacks with all sorts of tools and bells and whistles. And we find ourselves with the AEs working for the products and the tools rather than the tools working for us. And so when we, when we looked into this, um, we, we saw these numbers being so dramatic at the beginning of 2023, um, looking back 12 months, we ran the report again just a couple of months ago, looking at the first half of 2023. And there's some good news to share, okay? So the good news is that actually we saw an increase um, and we saw it in win rates. Uh, we saw, uh, we saw in, uh, win rates uh, increase by about 8%. Uh, sales cycles started to reduce again and deal values have started to increase up. So we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing some good green shoots, but we're nowhere near the 2021 levels that we were at before. But when you look at some of the headline numbers we see here, even though that the, the numbers were moving in the right direction, the number of reps that missed target in the first half of 2023 was even higher than, the, than, the, than, than where it ended in 2022. And the, when we look into the numbers in a bit more detail, what we find is that what we see, what we call the deal velocity or the, uh, the velocity delta was greater than ever before. So just 23% of AEs are now responsible for 83% of the revenue that's being generated. Okay, so there's, a, there's a, a growing gap between the ones, the talent that's producing and the rest of the team. Okay, and, and that gap is, is widest that we've ever seen before. The other shocking number that hit us was the percentage of opportunities that slipped after stage two. So after you finish your discovery and you're progressing through a sales process, you should have a closed date in mind. And we saw that nearly 40% of opportunities then slipped. Now, why is that a problem? Does it really matter if deals and opportunities slip? Well, the answer is yes, because as soon as we start to see that slippage number kick in, uh, we can see that win rates drop by almost a half, by almost 50%. Okay, so slippage is a real challenge for all organizations. Now, um, with all of these inefficiencies in the sales process, uh, a, a small organization called Boston Consulting Group did a piece of analysis, uh, and they tell us that over $2 trillion is being wasted in B2B sales in inefficient sales processes not being run consistently, okay? So we've got these massive, expensive sales engines that are not consistent and not data-driven, okay? So when we start to look at how we build a predictable revenue engine, there are really three key steps you need to consider. Data, the insights, and the processes that you're running around this, okay? And this is really where we came in and what we tried to focus on. So if we start by talking about the data, um, we see that there's, um, I, I really like this graphic because it, it, uh, it, it's the, uh, the idea that you can only see a small amount above the waterline, but there's a lot going on underneath, okay? So 
if we, we cannot build a data-driven predictable revenue engine without consistent data. And you cannot have consistent data if you're still relying on the AEs and the SDRs manually logging their activity, creating contacts, and keeping those contact records up to date over time. It just won't work. Okay? So you have to put in place a, 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 an engine to automatically keep the data clean and up to date and make sure you've got the technology in place to, to capture all of the activity, all of the signals that are going on around the organization and, and centralize that into a single place. So across the organizations using HubSpot, we found that only 6% of the contacts, that 6% of the active contacts that people are engaging with are missing, but 98% of the contacts in CRM were not, weren't in an act, weren't, had no relationship. Okay, so you, you can boast, boast about having a database of 100,000 contacts, but if you're only talking to less than 2,000 of them, it's really a vanity, vanity metric, vanity metric. We see that there's a lot of busy work going on, a lot of admin, that, and, and one thing I know about salespeople is they might be really good at building relationships. They're not so great at admin, okay? And, and the impact of that is not just the fact that you're spending 20% of that valuable salary on the admin. The, the impact of that is that they're not, they're not selling. They're not out there doing the day job. And actually, because they're not doing it, the data itself is starting to decay, and therefore, your predictable revenue engine is not as predictable as it should be. So once we've actually solved the data point, once we've got an engine in place keeping the data clean and up to date, then we start looking at the signals that drive revenue, okay? Trying to understand those, and, and, and I've, I've laid them out here in this slide. So um, I'm gonna rattle through them at a pace, but step one is make sure you're, try, you're targeting ICP, all right? It, you'd be shocked and surprised, you won't, maybe you won't be shocked to hear, but salespeople tend to work on anything that, that hits their desk. So if they get an inbound lead, they start working on it. But if it's not ICP, what's the bloody point? Okay, so what we found is that, that the, what we call sales velocity increases by nearly, by over 400% when we target the right ICP. Let's be conscious about the, to the, 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 the targets that we're going after. The second signal we found has a material impact on revenue is intent data, okay? So you can increase your win rates by, uh, by nearly 600% or your, your sales velocity by nearly 600% just by targeting companies with high intent. And by high intent, we're talking about um, topic clusters. What are they searching on that relates to what you do, okay? If you're not already using intent data, you should be. And, and what's great, one of the things we do for every customer is we go back a year and look at every deal that's closed one and lost in the past and tell you if they were in market when you were selling to them. So it's very helpful to understand if intent actually has a big, big impact on revenue for you. Then it's about identifying the right personas that you're engaging with. Now, if we can uh, target the right relationships at the right time, you can increase the sales velocity by, by 170%. Okay, so know which personas you should be engaging with at each stage of the sales cycle. So one of the interesting takeaways from the data we found was that actually sometimes you can increase your sales, you can, you can reduce the sales cycle by actually going into a key champion that takes you into the economic buyer rather than going directly into the economic buyer themselves first time round. Okay, so know which personas give you the best outcomes at each stage of the sales cycle and how multi-threaded you really need to be during that sales process. So now we know who we should be targeting, the next challenge is working out how strong those relationships are. So we measure relationship strength by understanding how much momentum you have, how much back and forth in the emails, the meetings, the calls that are taking place. Now, we know that the impact of, a good, of strong relationships has, has almost a, a, a 4x in, increase in win rates if you get the right levels of engagement with the right stakeholders at the right time. Then it's about using a deal methodology. Now, what was really fascinating when we analyzed all of these different uh, deals across all these different customers is that it didn't really matter too much which methodology you use. So if you're a fan of Medic or MedPick or Band or Spiced, um, it doesn't really matter as long as it's being captured in the CRM. So we've got a little widget that captures Medic or whichever methodology you want to use inside HubSpot. Um, and we've also got a call recording tool that actually pre-populates that based on the call transcripts as well. But if you're, if you're not doing it automatically, make sure the reps are qualifying their opportunities correctly. And then finally, um, time. We know time kills all deals, okay? So, but, but by how much? How big an impact does slippage and, and, and time have on your deals? And it will be different for different types of deals and different sales cycles. But we do know that, holding on, that reps hold on to deals for far too long. So to give you an idea of the opportunities we analyzed, 3.2 million opportunities we analyzed, 
Only 30% of the opportunities opened, close one. Okay? So 70% of the deals that are, that are being opened end up closing lost. And the deals that close, that close lost spend twice as long in pipe as deals that close one. So huge inefficiencies in our sales cycles. So when we bring it all together, um, we, we really focus on these three key areas. We can see that we can have a material impact on the velocity of sales. Okay, so by, uh, by you can increase your win rates by focusing on the right relationships at the right time, targeting accounts that are ICP and with high intent. So we know what, we've talked a lot about what, what's going wrong with the 73% of reps that are missing target, but let's talk about what, what's actually going right for the guys and girls that are hitting target. Okay? So when we look at the personas that are hitting target, we find that number one, they're, they've got more high quality relationships than the low performers we see that they're much more likely to have the right relationships at the right stages of the sales cycle, and they've, mu they've got many more of their opportunities that are in flight are ICP. Okay? We can also see here that uh, they are much more likely to uh, complete the, the, the medic or the methodology they're using, uh, and they're also much more likely to update the CRM or their, their, their stages every single week. Okay? So these are the behaviors of the top performers that we're seeing in market. So we talked about the data, and then we talked about the insights. Now the next challenge is the processes. And what I've tried to do here is break down some of the insights that you should be considering at each stage of the sales cycle. So for example, when we're prospecting, we know that uh, it's right to make sure that you know who your ICP is. So which vertical market are they in? How big should they be? And, and make sure we're targeting the right types of businesses. We also want to make sure they've got, that, they, that the intent is there. Okay? So look for propensity scoring. So this propensity scoring is about consolidating all the disparate data points you have in your marketing stack and trying to understand which customers are, have high intent, are in market to buy the products you're selling, because it's a whole lot easier to sell, to sell to somebody who's already got a budget and wants to buy what you're selling. Then in the qualification uh, process, make sure you're using a methodology. It has a big impact on, on, on win rates. Uh, and again, um, we find that not all leads are equal, okay? So you might find that uh, in this case, for example, demo requests is a great source. So don't, make sure you're prioritizing the, the opportunities that are coming from the right source. Now, on the discovery phase, we see that, uh, that uh, win rates drop when they start talking about a competitor, so be aware of that. And you should be automatically capturing it, okay? So no, your, your call recording tool should be populating HubSpot with details of any competitors that are being mentioned in the calls as they're taking place. We also know that certain stakeholders involved in the sales cycle at the demo stage are going to have a bigger impact on your win rates. Uh, and then at the proposal phase, we can see that um, uh, that, that when certain questions around pricing are raised, it can actually drop your win rates. So they can start to push back on pricing and it can slow things down. And then finally, at the negotiation stage, again, if the close date starts to push, it can have a, it, it's a really good signal that that deal is, is in danger of closing loss. We see a lot of deals closing far too late in the sales cycle here. And the main reason for that is that the qualification wasn't done correctly at the beginning. We never really found out if they had budget. We didn't really understand who the, what the buying process looked like and who was actually going to sign this off. We skipped through that stage. We went through a whole discovery phase. We went through a, a whole process of bringing other stakeholders from the business involved into the sales process. And then at the 11th hour, the deal doesn't close because we didn't qualify correctly at the beginning. Now, guiding, the, the, there's so much great technology out there now with the AI. And so you should all now be using a cool AI product that populates inside HubSpot details of, uh, uh, of how, the, how the process has gone during the sales process, uh, during the sales calls. Okay? So capturing things like um, uh, automatically populating the MedPick or the Medic for you or the Bant automatically through the call recording um, and making sure that any objections are captured in the system so that you can then report on them and, and build up that predictable revenue engine. Start to understand the signals that are leading to revenue. So powering your revenue, your revenue operations is very different for different stakeholders. Okay? So for example, the reps are interested in understanding the signals that are the, and the best next actions. They want to understand what do they need to do next to, to minimize risk to move this deal forward as quickly as possible. While the managers are much more interested in pipeline reviews. 
They want to understand which deals, you, if you've got a whole team of AEs, they'll, all they'll want to do is focus on the deals that are going well so that they get a pat on the back. And in reality, we don't want to talk about those. We want to work on the ones that need, that need help. Okay? So knowing which opportunities need attention uh, and knowing it earlier and course correcting so that, the, remember, only 30% of opportunities open are closing one. So if we, can, if we can understand the risks in the deals that aren't going to close one earlier, uh, we can actually course correct or, worst case, we can start to close them off earlier okay? because it's better to fail faster so we can get on something more productive. Now, leaders are looking for a much more consistent and accurate forecast. There's no reason why you shouldn't be running a forecast that's at least 95% accurate by now. Okay? All the signals you've got around your business from your marketing stack and your sales stack, or the call recordings, the emails that are taking place, the meetings that are going on, you should be able to build a predictable revenue engine that tells you what number you're going to hit at the end of the quarter. Okay? Now, if you haven't already got that in place, uh, again, that's how, where we come in, and we can plug that in. And for what it's worth, there's a two-week free trial on our website. So no commitments, no credit cards. Give it a go, just connect it to HubSpot and you'll see how this stuff operates. Now, we talked a lot about deal slippage before and the impact of slippage on win rates is nearly, 40, is, is nearly 50%. Okay, so what we can see here is that uh, if, we're gonna see, um, if we're gonna see deals uh, lose, if we're gonna lose opportunities, we wanna lose them in the earliest stages as possible. And what we can see here is a graphic that shows us that we're not doing enough work in those earlier stages to get rid of the opportunities and therefore we're investing too much time in them and that they should be, we should be trying to close them off sooner. But one of the questions that comes up a lot is, okay, we know that slippage is an indicator of deals that are likely to close lost, but what's an indicator for slippage? And the answer is engagement, okay? Relationship strength. So we score every relationship you have in the business and as we see that relationship score drop, when people stop turning up to meetings, stop responding to your emails, uh, uh, stop um, uh, 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 engaging with you or taking your phone calls, that's a really good indicator that the deals are likely to slip, which is a really good indicator that the deals are likely to close lost. Now, as soon as you start to see that signal, escalating the opportunity up to a sea level or trying to find a way of, 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 circumvent, of finding out why that issue is slowing down means that you're in a position of power and you can start to affect change. So again, uh, looking at risks of slippage, what we can see is that only 16% of the opportunities that we benchmarked uh, actually hit the date that they were planned to close after stage two. So after you've finished your discovery, you've agreed a close plan with your prospect, uh, we see that slippage, uh, uh, slippage happens uh, on, on, almost, uh, on, on so many of the opportunities that don't have these three key stakeholders. And only 16% of opportunities being worked cover these three key areas. So I know I keep going on about it, but having a methodology in place is really key to making sure that you hit target and, and that opportunities come in correctly. Making sure you're targeting companies with high intent is key and building good, strong relationships. Even in today's market, in B2B sales, relationships drive revenue, okay? So building those strong relationships, there is nothing more important. So taking away the admin from the sales team and encouraging them and even incentivizing them to, to be multi-threaded and building strong relationships with an engagement score above 80. So we score every relationship out of 100. Now, there is no silver bullet for a single individual data point here, okay? The whole idea of revenue operations and building predictable revenue engines is making small incremental improvements across the sales cycle, and it leads to exponential results. So as you can see here, small incremental changes to the, to the line uh, from the top to the bottom can actually double the ARR we generate from each, AR, from each rep every month. So final slide, guys, uh, before I give you something to take away. Um, these, are the the, the, these are the key takeaways I, I would uh, I encourage you to think about. So focus on building good, quality, consistent data by automating the capture through uh, your emails, your calls, your meetings. It should all be captured inside HubSpot and visible on every opportunity. Secondly, make sure you're measuring your pipeline and the sales velocity. Okay? So understand what good looks like. Once we've got that in place, we can then benchmark the deals uh, uh, that are in flight against deals that have closed one and lost in the past. Try and understand which factors, which signals are, are in influencing your specific sales processes. How multi-threaded do we need to be? Which stakeholders should we be engaging with at each stage of the sales cycle to optimize the sales process and maximize our win rates? Understanding those signals is key. If you've got a free trial, how often do they log in? Which buttons do they push that leads to an outcome that you want to achieve? Okay, so understanding the signals that are leading to revenue is absolutely vital here. I would encourage you all to be scoring relationships, 
um, uh, uh, engagement or propensity scoring uh, on, on, off, on leads and, and scoring deals. Okay, so you know the health of those opportunities just at a glance. And then finally, deep dive into the funnel. Try and understand where the friction sits so you can take it out. Okay, thank you very much for your time, everybody. If you want a copy of the report itself, uh, all you have to do is scan the QR code um, and uh, you can download the, the report um, from our website. Uh, as I say, there's a whole lot more uh, insights available uh, on the report. And I thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions. I think we've got, got a couple of minutes left if anyone has any questions at all. Yes. Um, you spoke about um, analyzing previous deals and seeing if the customers were actually in market. Do, yes. Did they have any in time? So I was just curious to learn more about that. Like, how do you? Okay, so um, there's a number of providers out there that provide intent data. Uh, companies like Sixth Sense, um, or the data points behind Sixth Sense is a company like Bombora that we work with. Um, and what you're able to do is actually go back historically. So when we onboard a customer, the first thing we do is we go back four, four quarters. And we'll show you historically every deal that closed one and lost, whether they had intent before you started engaging with them. Okay, so we can show you that data. And for some vertical markets, intent doesn't have a big impact on revenue because actually you have to educate the customer to, to buy your product. But for other markets, intent is vital. And it has a huge impact, not just on win rates, but actually time to close as well. Are you, with that intent feature, are yes. you able to customize the the target intent keywords that you're searching for? The cluster. The platform? The, yeah. the, yes, of course, yeah. So, um, uh, because... Like Bombora, for instance, has... It is, it's Bombora's data. Gotcha, okay. Right, gotcha. so it's Bombora's data, so yes, you can, use, uh, you can use topic clusters, and we can go back historically and tweak them with you to make sure that we can see if, that, if those customers were in market when you were selling to them. Cool, thank you very much. Great. Any other questions? And the, the cool thing I heard was you said two weeks of you get a chance to go in, test, connect it to HubSpot. Yes. Like that's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So you get access to the full Ebster platform, all of the benchmarking we talked about, see your pipeline in, in real time, uh, understand your forecast uh, uh, for two weeks completely for free, uh, no commitments, uh, and it takes about 30 seconds to set up. So uh, go to ebster.com and check it out. Or if you download the benchmark report, I suspect one of my sales team might be in touch. <laughs> Let's give it up for Guy from Epsta. Let's give him a round of applause, very ladies good. and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you, my friend. Appreciate you. Great. Do you want to finish with a song or a dance or anything? Uh, I, I was going to do a pole dance, but the pole's not uh, here. Oh, the pole's so not here. Okay, next sweet. Time. Next, next time. time. Next yeah. time. I like it. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here.